Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO, free impartial advice on all your debt. Razavan, if IFL TV in association with MTK Global, with me, I've got the master knowledge himself, Mr. Spencer Ferron. Spencer, looking sharp as always. How are we doing? Yeah, I'm good, man. I'm good. Uh, I had a long day today, so I'm uh, looking to go to my bed in a bit, man. I'm tired. Um, Spencer, before we talk about the boxing fights coming up this weekend, I just want to touch on, obviously, announcement made this week by the government that allows fans back into indoor and outdoor stadiums and obviously uh, boxing will have fans potentially for the Anthony Yard fight next week and the Anthony Joshua fight the week after. It's only, it's only good news for us, isn't it? 100% um, it is and uh, it'd, be, it'd, be, it'd be nice now because like people need to go out um, to get that boxing vibe, that atmosphere. You know I mean, it's been great what everybody's been doing, like what Frank Warren's been putting on shows uh, with no crowd, Eddie Hearn's been doing fantastic shows, MTK Global been doing wicked shows as well, up in Wakefield. Um, but you know, we, we do need um, crowd participation and all the rest of it. But the major thing, as long as it's safe, because like I said, something's uh, killing people at this present moment, regardless of what it is, whether you wanna be a conspiracy theorist or not, something's killing people. So we, we still should uh, be safe enough on, on, on certain things. So long as there's certain safety procedures where, where they're allowing fans in, then yeah, go for it. Also, Spencer, I wanted to just get your thoughts. Uh, the government announced uh, a package of funding towards sports. Um, they announced many sports, football, rugby, horse riding, uh, were given millions of pounds. But for some weird, bizarre reason, boxing was left out of their funding package. And we know boxing has, does a lot for the young people who have single, single parents, no parents, who had bad upbringings, who are, uh, have no friends, who've been bullied or harassed. You know, boxing has done a lot for these kind of people. Whether they become professionals or not is something else. But how saddened were you, saddened were you when you heard the news that boxing isn't getting any funding at this stage from the government? It's, it's absolutely ridiculous because if we think about the growth of boxing within our country, especially since um, the funding that was put in to uh, the build up for the Olympics and the lottery funding, which, which culminated with the GB squad winning multiple um, gold medals and the reverberation of boxing, which has happened in the last eight years, mainly because of Anthony Joshua, let's call it as it is, right? I think it's absolutely ludicrous. It's disrespectful. Uh, you, you think about what, what boxing does, that it was Joe Frazier that called it the best in 1989. And Joe Frazier, former heavyweight champion of the world, said, uh, like, boxing brings out kings and queens, rich and poor, everything for this spectacle, this which, which is a mass, uh, and that's disgraceful. It's really, really disgusting, to tell you the honest truth. But, you know what I mean, it, it, it also makes you identify that there is a lot of classism uh, in the world. And especially, like, for a government to, to do all these kind of things, but to leave out boxing, like, oh, that's barbaric and stuff. That's disgraceful. It is really, really disgusting. And I'm, I'm appalled by it, to tell you the truth, because boxing has given me a, a, a fantastic life. I'm going to be real. You know what I mean? I've got, I'll be blessed. Do you know what I mean? Uh, imagine I get paid to talk boxing. So I think it's, it's absolutely disgusting. And there should be more outcry and more uproar about the fact that there hasn't been any funding put into it. And I'm not even saying to, for professional boxing. I'm saying about the amateur, and the word, uh, what is it? Uh, amateur, it, it comes from the, from the Greek or the Latin, what means for the love of. These gentlemen are doing this sport for the love of it because they're not really getting off. So there should be, there should be something done like to bring back amateur shows or funding done to bring back amateur shows to, to, to help feed because that, that young amateur kid today is going to be the star of tomorrow and potentially they, they, they're cutting funding that is going to affect because everything has a ripple effect which will reverberate around the sport where you could be stopping the next superstar from excelling in their 
in their elected field that they want to go for. So it's disgusting. And that's that. I know Eddie Hearns put a post out where he sent a letter to a couple of MPs. I'm not sure whether they are the sports ministers, uh, but we, let's hope that they read that letter and hope they turn back the decision and, and reverse the decision and, and give some funding to the sport of boxing. Well, well, if I think what they should be done. It should be a petition. In fact, IFL should do it. IFL should start the petition, I'm telling you now, uh, and and everybody will sign. They've got loads, they've got just under a million subscribers. And we'll just get a worldwide petition to say that it's disgusting that no funding is not being, being dealt with for boxing. And I've noticed that these things are, that um, within uh, boxing, it's like they don't want to give funding, but they want to reap the rewards of success that we have. And if we see, it was just a few years ago, we had 12 world champions at one time. Three, three years ago, we had 12 world champions, right? And I don't want to hear that, oh, well, you know, what title we're fragmenting now, and the, the, the rest of it. okay, that's cool. But never in the history of the sport has British boxing excelled in the way that it has, right? So obviously something works, right? So what happens is this. When you invest in something, properly invest in something, you get major returns. And the major returns are also societal because kids have got thick places to go. They've got places to be occupied in. There is no better sport that gives a young individual, male or female, black or white, rich or poor, better grounding of discipline than this noble art. And it is a noble art because it was, uh, it was produced by noble men. So therefore, give it some credence and its respect that it's deserved. And I think it's absolutely disgusting, but I think a petition should be started. And let's take it from there. Spent Saturday, uh, two big heavyweight fights. Uh, can you guess which two? And which one are you looking forward to the most? What's the two big heavyweight fights? What are they? Who's fighting? So Frank Warren has one. Daniel yeah, Pabon, and Joe Joyce. Yeah, and what's the other one? And, and the exhibition, Mike Tyson, Roy Jones. So what, what do you want to say about that? Which one are you looking forward to the most? There's only one big fight. The next, the other fight's the exhibition. Right, so let's call it as it is. But what I am saying is this. A lot of people, a lot of people were, were being very um, cynical about, oh, why is it pay-per-view? But yet they paid for, was it Logan Paul and, and KSI to fight each other? They paid for that. So you trying to tell me that two men that don't know a left hook from a fishing hook, right? are more important than two legends of the game. Yes, they are two past peak legends of the game, but nobody really complained when Frank Sinatra came over here in, in, in the 80s to sing songs. Everyone know that Frank Sinatra was well past peak. You know what I mean? Elvis Presley's last major performance in, what was it, Honolulu? Like, everyone knew that Elvis Presley was way past peak, had a girl to one and everything else, but they still come out to go and watch Elvis Presley. This is a, an exhibition. It should be taken as such that it's an exhibition. And, and majorly, if you watch anything of Mike Tyson, Mike Tyson needs to fight. You know what I mean? Because he has got, he's got demons in the closet that, that he's trying to exorcise. Do I think, like, I'm saying the last time I recall seeing Roy Jones fight, um, the last time I recall, because I think that Roy Jones peed on his legacy years ago, right? Seriously, he did. Um, was him getting knocked out by Enzo Mercanelli. That's the last time I can remember of Roy Jones getting, right? So, and fair play to Enzo Mercanelli, because Enzo Mercanelli said, that weren't real, the real Roy Jones. You know what I mean? Um, Joe Kalecki didn't even fight the real Roy Jones. When they fought, that weren't the real Roy Jones. Roy Jones was way past peak then. And also, I'm sitting down thinking, like, the last time I remember Mike Tyson, was it 2005? He was getting stopped by Kevin McBride. Kevin McBride! So... So all of a sudden, these guys, they've turned back the clock now and they're going to do, no, they're not going to do nothing. But what it will be, it will be entertaining. And I think it's more of a fact that we as human beings, we like Crash TV, right? And that's the truth. So it's kind of Crash TV, but these men are legends of the sport. I'm just being real. But I think um, one has peed on his legacy in, in Roy Jones because people don't remember just how great Roy Jones was the night they beat um, um, James Tony in an incredible performance, I, right? 
It was an incredible, it was so incredible the performance that the fight actually became boring. And he done that to James Tony. Well, people seem to forget, uh, what was it, in 2003, when he, when he beat John Ruiz to become the WBA heavyweight champion of the world. That, no, no. That Roy, Roy Jones something very, very special. But unfortunately, Roy Jones did not, did not learn the fundamentals of boxing because he's so naturally gifted and naturally talented. And when you are that talented and you don't know the fundamentals, the, um, and this is no disgrace, who do you mean Roy Jones not on the No, I'm saying Roy Jones wasn't taught the fundamentals. He was a gifted, blessed man from God with incredible hand speed. And the thing about it is this, he was so fast with his hands that we didn't know that Roy Jones maybe couldn't take a shot. You know what I mean? That's the truth. But, and I'm not knocking Mike Tyson because the night, the night Mike Tyson beat Michael Spinks uh, in 1988 in, what was it, in 91 seconds to become the, the recognized Ring Magazine, because that was for the Ring Magazine belt. That night, that, that Mike Tyson there, that 22-year-old monster, 23-year-old monster, was he? that Mike Tyson there most probably could have beaten any heavyweight in history. And that's the truth. I'm just being real. But we can't look at it now to think that it's, it's anything now because they're two past peak men. It's an exhibition which I'm looking forward to. But one thing that remains undefeated in the sport of boxing is father time. And that's the truth. Remains undefeated. He's whooped everybody. Father time's whooped Joe Lewis. Father, go through the history. Father time whooped Joe Lewis. Father time whooped Ezen Charles. Father time whooped um, one of the greatest, one of the greatest to ever do it. And young kids go look on Archie Moore who's had the highest knockout um, uh, ratio and percentage of, of any world champion in the history of the sport. He was a light heavyweight champion who famously floored uh, Rocky Marciano in 19, was it, 1956. Go watch, go watch these guys here. When you watch these guys, and you start realizing like, wow, Father Time beats these guys and, and, and Archie Moore boxed to a very, very late age. But you go watch, Father Time's undefeated. He's undefeated for a reason. So as we've seen a lot of comments, people have said, oh, we're not buying this pay-per-view. It's, it's, they're not going to actually fight. But we also remember that people, like even Floyd Mayweather, even very recently, Floyd is regarded as one of the best to ever do it. He went over to Hong Kong or Japan, I can't recall which country, or China. He had an exhibition. I know Muhammad Ali's had many exhibitions. Fighters have the right to do what they want at some, time, at some stage in their life. They don't always have to please the fans. Yeah, one hundred percent. You don't have to please a fan, but and um, at the same time, there was a want for people to go and see this. I, I think Mike Tyson to me is a, is a fantastic comeback story because he's very open about him battling his demons. He's very open about fighting mental health. He's he's he's, uh, he's very open about you know the depression that he, he he's gone through. So. <sighs> Loads of people being fooled thinking we're going to see the Mike Tyson who was 21 years old or this, this 19 year old who was from Brownsville who was knocking out everybody. People were sitting down thinking that we're going to see that guy. You're not going to see that guy. I'm just being real. You're not going to see him. Yeah, he may be in condition or the rest of it, but he's still an old man. But what it is, it's just like for the nostalgia, let's just buy it and say, look, mate, look, you know I mean, these, these two great legends, these great warriors, you know what I mean? I'm, I'm still interested to see it, right? But I'm not desperate to see it. I ain't set my alarm clock. If I wake up at the time, I'm going to watch it. And sadly, I also see Daniel Dubois taking on uh, Joe Joyce. Um, a step up for, for Daniel here. He's jumping in with someone who's got quite a lot of experience in the amateur game. He's a silver medalist in the Olympics. Um, I know Joe hasn't had a lot of professional fights. But question one is, is this fight too early for Daniel? No, it's not. The best thing COVID could have done right, is, is you have to realise that, well, we got to fight. You know what I mean? We, we, we got to fight. We got to fight. Um, why shouldn't they fight each other? Just think about it. Why shouldn't they fight each other? They should fight each other. And the thing about it is this, and I'll tell you why it's a very intriguing fight, because we don't really, hand on heart, nobody could put their hand on their heart and say, definitely, definitely, I don't care what Sam Jones is saying, my, definitely my guy's going to win, right? 
Frank Warren does not definitely know that that Daniel Dubois is going to win. Right? It's two unknown commodities. Period. Let's call it as it is. And the only reason why you'd be choosing another fighter over a next fighter is because you can have an emotional attachment to him. And that's the truth. I have an emotional attachment to boxing. So therefore, I'm not quite rightly sure who's going to win. Right? But looking at it, just looking at it, here is a man that was a 2016 Olympic silver medalist, right, when he fought Yonka. He actually could have won that fight. You know what I mean? So, yeah, you're actually looking at, like, the 2016 gold medalist. He really wanted to be kind of pushy on it, right? Daniel Dubois hasn't fought nowhere to the caliber of any of the opponents that Joe Joyce has faced. But Joe Joyce, within himself, he is, you know what I mean? He's very methodical. He's very stiff. He's very, you know what I mean? You, you see him and, he, and you think that he's like the, the tin man from Wizard of Oz. Like you want to put some oil on him. Seriously, he's that, right? I'm not disrespecting him. I'm telling you the truth, right? But when you look at it, Daniel Dubois is very stiff as well. You know what I mean? I'm telling you, I, the fact is this, I actually know Daniel's dead. Otherwise, I thought that Daniel Dubois is the love child of Frank Bruno. I'm just telling you how it is. Do you know what I mean? But in saying that, both of them are very good. But they're just stiff. Why are you laughing? I'm just telling you how it is, bro. No, I'm listening. No, I'm listening. Also, um, Ismo Salas uh, tested, unfortunately, positive uh, yesterday, I believe, for, or, and they announced it today for COVID-19. He's not in the corner for Joe. Uh, I know Joe spent very minimum time with him. Uh, and he has obviously Stephen in his corner as well. But is it a loss for Joe to have someone like Ismail not in his corner? I think he's gonna, he's gonna, um, yeah, I do. You know what I mean? I do, and I think it's gonna favor the Bowers. The Bowers brothers who actually train, um, and they have a wealth of a plethora of experience. But I'm saying at this level here, when you're talking about these kind of breeder money and that, no, they haven't had that experience. So I think Ismail Sellis has been around for a long time, right? So I think it, it, it's gonna, it's, it's, I think it's detrimental that he's not there, right? I think it's, it's, it's a major thing. And also there's no crowd there. So because there's no crowd there as well, it's gonna be, it's, it's another thing. So we, we don't know. What, what I'm saying is this, um, Daniel Dubois should win, Joel Joyce could win. But if you look at it properly on paper, and look at the, the opponents that Joel Joyce has gone in there. He's been in there with a former heavyweight world champion. He's been in there with a former heavyweight world title challenger. But we're looking on this fight, and I'm saying, wait a minute. Jennings is a, he's a small... In today's, as we look at heavyweights, he's a small heavyweight. But Jennings hurt you with a body shot. Right? David Dubois don't hit like Jennings, bro. Right? That's so this is Daniel Dubois goes down. If Daniel Dubois goes downstairs on, on Joe Joyce property, he could cause a stoppage, right? But then, equally, if Joe Joyce gets behind his jab and not fighting on the back foot either, but gets behind his jab and throws those combination shots and moves off, you know, he throws shots, you hit the right and spin off. If he does that, he could actually befuddle Daniel Dubois and beat Daniel Dubois on points because I'm going to be real with you. I actually see this fight going points. I see this fight going 12 rounds, right? And yeah, that's why I, I see this fight, I do. I see this fight going points. And then we will see. Since we don't, we know anti Joshua fights uh, in a couple of weeks time, we, and obviously pending that he comes to Kubrat Pulev, we, we're not sure what happens next. Does he fight Tyson Fury? Does he fight Alexander Usyk? Does he vacate the WBO belt? because we know the mandatory is due. Now, if he was to vacate, potentially the winner of this fight of Dubois and Joyce could face Usyk. Is the winner, whoever that may be, will they be ready for someone like Usyk? Yes. They would be. Um, because they're both big men. If they were smaller heavyweights, then no. But because of their size, I think that that's a massive difference. Uh, and Usyk isn't 
Usyk was an out and out puncher when he was at that cruiserweight. But if he hit you, you knew you you could go. Oh, you don't believe me? I'll Tony Benny, right? But uh, it's a different kettle of fish when you look at the the mass of these men. Um, but yeah, I think Usyk could give any one of these guys a a, a, a torrid night. But I think because of the size of these guys, I think these guys could give him a torrid night as well. But I think to step into to say you're fighting someone like Usyk, who's had that world title experience you need a little bit more time. But if the fight was cool, then I think they want to go take it, especially after the performance that Usyk did against Derek Sazora, then maybe they'll say they want to go take that fight. But, you know, right right now, how, how I see it, um, it's, 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 uh, not, it's, not a, it's, it's, it's not an easy proposition for either, either one who wants to win that fight. Spent on end on this, because I know it's quite late, uh, five, six days away now from MTK's golden contract. I know you're going to be there as the analysis for MTK, uh, headlined by, obviously, Ryan Walsh and Jazza Dickens, to fight that should have happened many months ago, uh, delayed a couple of times, and then obviously Jazza uh, failed uh, a COVID test, but um, a great domestic fight for two great athletes. Wicked fight. And that's a toss-up as well. That is a toss-up as well. I like both guys as well. So I really like, you know, when I mean like I like, I, I personally like both guys. Um, I slightly lean towards Walsh to win this fight. But you know what? I do know it's going to be a bomb burner. So either, either way, it's going to be a bomb burner, man. I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Spencer Ferron, IFL TV, thank you very much. Yeah, man, you're welcome. And you know what I end? As I always end, assalamu alaikum to all my Muslim brothers and sisters. If you know what I mean? You put God first, you can never come second. Peace two fingers, I'm out. Thank you very much. Is your debt causing you sleepless nights? Knock your debt out with Debt KO. And your debt won't be the only thing keeping you up at night. Debt KO. Free, impartial advice on all your debts.